Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gode. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and assisted conception at Fertility Plus and Fertility Courses. So today I'm going to talk to you about uh, a bit of embryology and what happens to frozen embryos and what is the information that we get after thawing the embryos. And the subject we came in this paper where we saw post-warming embryo morphology this was associated with live birth rates. And that was a cohort study of single vitrified warm blastocyst transfers. So, and what we're trying to find out is what happens when you uh, thaw the embryos and does the morphology of thawed embryos make a difference? So the aim of this study was basically to examine whether blastocyst morphology after warming is associated with better live birth rates. So let's look at this study where it showed 612 cycles with 126 PGTA tested, genetically tested embryos. The live birth date increased by 11% and that was in collapsed blastocyst group to 38.9% in the post warming group. So you can see a phenomenal jump to live birth rates. Then they also looked at cell survival. Remember, whenever you freeze an embryo and you thaw it, there's certain amount of cell damage. Now, blastocysts can take damage slightly better because there are 100 to 150 cells which are arranged. So they seem to take damage much better. Now, when you looked at this cell survival, the amount of cell survival also indicated how what would be the success rate. So in cases in which there was a very low survival, it was 6.5%, which basically means that the chances of pregnancy were very low. But when the cell survival was high, the birth rate was 34.7%, which is again, very good. And if you have a look at this graph down below, you will see that depending on the expansion, as well as depending on the number of cells that survive in pregnancy, the live birth rates could be dictated. So what do you want? You want the embryos to thaw well, to expand well, and in addition to survive with a good number of cells. Now, this slide also shows that in genetically tested embryos, a partial expansion or a poor expansion had a lower chance of pregnancy and fully expanded blastocysts, which were genetically tested, had a, had a better chance of pregnancy. Again, a collapsed blastocyst does have a small pregnancy rate and, and women do achieve a pregnancy, though at a lower rate. So what does this paper suggest? And, and like all papers, you know, this paper also is going to give you certain indications of what it would be its suggestions. Now, one is that in some centers where you are going to do a double embryo transfer, if you see that one uh, embryo has not thawed well and has had a partial uh, survival, the option of putting the second embryo can be made. Now, the risk of twin pregnancy is always present. Next is if the embryo does not thaw well or the cell survival is poor, I think it is fair enough to give a very clear idea to the pregnancy rates. And we, we are able to tell this much better and say, see, pregnancy rates are more likely to be lower. And the two of the main areas where I think the authors are correct is thawing, freezing, revitrification. All these form key indicators of how well your lab is doing. And also fine tuning that is an ongoing process which, which is required. Now, in conclusion, this paper would say that your pregnancy rates in a thawed embryo are best if the embryo expands completely and if the cell survival is very good. Even if that does not happen, pregnancy rates do happen but are much lower.